My name is Kevin Obelenek. I'm working at VITO, which is an independent uh, research organization based in Belgium. I would like really briefly start by positioning, let's say, the content of my presentation, looking at the left side and highlighting some keywords from the program of this conference and connecting, connected to what I will be talking about. But looking at the right side, I've put this and uh, used this quotation to make an analogy with the fact that as our business and regulatory environment are evolving, we need to adjust our tactic. We need to rethink our methodological approaches for fighting climate change and since the design phase. phase. And that's, let's say, the strategic le level I will try to stick to during my presentation. And let me start right away with my key message for today. We are in a transition phase towards a circular economy. And in this transition, the role of project design is essential. If we want to implement effective eco-design approaches in this transition, the creation of a common language, ensuring the compatibility of relevant stakeholder sources of value creation is essential. We need to rethink the way we are currently organizing and integrating eco-design activities that have characterized as our break for packaging sustainability and give it another shape and dynamic. And through the remaining time I have for this presentation, I will try to show you why and how. So again, let's start with positioning, let's say this evolving environment. So you've all heard about the European Green Deal, the new circular economy action plan not only as a response to those political ambitions, but we now see more and more ambitious commitments from the packaging industry, and now more and more targeting products, limiting products, environmental footprint, or using X amount of recycled materials. We've seen, and in the B2C sector, that many eco-design approaches have proven to be successful in a way of improving industrial competitiveness. But many other eco-design approaches have also shown some limits with one-off intervention of consultants or with the development of tools that are only usable and intelligible by environmental experts, still making some people within some organization believing that sustainability and performance is not really compatible. So as there is not one size fit all solution for an effective implementation of eco-design approaches, one key success factor highlighted in the literature is a tailoring of, of the approach to the business context. It needs to be specific to the sector and to the customer's expectation. As my last point in this evolving environment, transition towards a circular economy requires a systemic change based on entire value chains collaboration. I will come back to that on, with my next slides. So as circularity needs to become the motor of industrial transformation, we need to rethink the way we are currently doing business. So we need to, re to rethink the way we are currently integrating eco-design activities. Coming back to my last point on this evolving environment and really in line, I think, with what Karen uh, pre presented about the different track. Let's first, let's say, agree on what do we mean with the circular products and what are our design measures for enabling the circular strategies you can see in blue here on this simplified framework. You can design for an optimized resource use, making sure that you are using the right amount of material, or making sure that you are designing for an environmentally sound and safe product use. For example, making sure you are taking out toxic substances of plastic products, or making sure now, and what is interesting is that we can design for prolonged product use, making sure that we can design packaging for being reused, for instance, and as it has already been discussed. We can design for recycling, as we all know, or we can now see that we can design for sustainable sourcing, making sure that we identify and select sustainable primary and or secondary raw materials. I've been really fast on those design levers. Not, of the, not all of them are directly and only applicable to packaging or package products. They have been taken out from a study on plastic products in general. But what I wanted to highlight with those five main levers in a circular economy, and also coming back to what Karen was saying, is that we do see an evolution in the type of levers we see appearing. We have now 
in a let's say in a in a linear economy, ecodesign was mainly focusing on resource efficiency, material efficiency, and energy efficiency. We now see new and complementary design levers appearing to make sure that we design with the name of maintaining functionality at the highest level possible at all times. And it's why I have entitled my presentation, we need to break. We need to maintain functionality at the highest level possible, if possible at product level, and if not at a material level. An additional aspect I would like to highlight when, when talking about designing for the circular economy, is that the evolution we briefly saw before on the previous slides and the need for new and complementary levers could almost bilaterally be addressed among engineering communities and environmental experts. What I want to emphasize here is that when designing for the circular economy, our design levers need to become multidimensional. We have new stakeholders joining our race, and I want to highlight this by giving, um, so we need basically to, to have a, a broader vision when designing for the circular economy. And I want to highlight this fact with, um, with some ongoing project we, has, uh, we have as Vito. And here is, uh, for example, a study I've been coordinating on how eco-design principles for to plastics, applicable to plastics are currently applied within our sustainable product policy framework, looking at, let's say, the policy dimension. I'm currently working on a study for the European Environment Agency on empowering consumers and communication approaches toward consumers. I want to touch upon this aspect as we can design the most sustainable packaging in the world if we do not provide the right information at the, for the, to the consumer as a point of sales, or if we do not engage the consumer in reusing our packaging solution, it's almost useless. Here, by mentioning this ongoing activity and a white paper we have been releasing, let's say, two weeks ago on digital circular economy, we, we are looking at how digital technologies can accelerate the transition towards a circular economy. I think we have a really nice talk later on on how digital solutions can help us in uh, improving waste management activities. Here, what I want to touch upon is I think the topic of smart packaging could fit here. Maybe it could become a way for us to transition toward more service-based business model and shift the concept of consumers to the one of users. A last project I wanted to display on this slide is a collector's project. It's a Horizon 2020 project, which has for ambition to assess the performance of waste collection systems in Europe. In this project, We've gathered information on 57 waste collection system on how plastic packaging waste is currently collected. And we saw that for those 57 waste collection system, the way packaging is collected, the collection method, and with which material is highly divergent in Europe for the very same material. And we know, and really subsequently affecting the quality of collected waste. And we know that in a circular economy, that the quality of the waste, which is driving its value as a secondary raw material. So what I wanted to highlight with positioning um, the collector's project here is that when designing for recycling, we should not forget any steps in the value chain. We should design for collection and sorting first. So by positioning, let's say, those uh, projects uh, on this slide, what I wanted to highlight is uh, complexity and this need for holistic approaches to be taken into consideration already since the design stage. So as a really brief uh, wrap up on the why of this presentation, the question is how to bring the different pieces of this puzzle together, how to organize the integration of an effective eco-design approach in the design process of packaging products. And I might have an answer to this research questions that I'm happy to discuss and present to you today. Recently, I've, rec I've performed a type of reflexive monitoring exercise on three projects related to eco-design in which our team has been directly or indirectly been involved. With this exercise, I try to detach myself from the project and their execution, and rather try to highlight some aspects, some key success factor or even commonalities between those three projects. 
the first the first one but from a more business perspective let's say and the first one is a circus all project is a horizon 20 we uh, 2020 we are also coordinating and in which project partners are currently conducting a task on designing pv modules for circularity another one the second one is a study that some colleagues have been conducting for the european space agency and the objective was to identify and select relevant eco design options for space mission the third one is an online tool, Ecolizer, made available for free by the Public Waste Agency of Flanders, OVA, and in which, since a couple of years, our team is providing the knowledge or the, let's say, the engine behind the tool. And then you might say, okay, yeah, but what is the link with packaging? Let me come back to that in, um, in the next slides. So what I try to do is try to list who are the different stakeholders involved in this project and gather and highlight some additional aspects. What I've noticed is that in all three projects, it, those, um, yeah, those projects were based on um, multi-stakeholder collaboration with stakeholders speaking a totally different business language. Here I've tried to go a bit further and I looked at why did ISA actually initiated this project? Why did they release a tender on eco-design? Was because they were the key decision maker were committed uh, to the United Nations Global Compact. What I found interesting here is that all the different expertise reflected by the involved stakeholders were reflected here on the how did we select the relevant eco-design option. And I think that connects quite well with the previous presentation. So that's not only the ecological aspect, which is a, a factor uh, driving, uh, driving um, design. Here I've highlighted the tailoring to the business specificities and here again the uh, intelligibility and accessibility. But okay, what was my main takeaway from this analysis? What I took out here is that for effectively implementing eco-design activities, we need to involve several stakeholders speaking a totally different business language. For that, we need to facilitate the creation of a common language to make sure that we ensure an effective collaboration among themselves. Based on that, I've tried to develop a stepwise methodological approach targeting experts in charge of organizing the integration of eco-design activities within their organization. And my suggestion is to start by listing environmental commitments associated with product and services. As key decision makers have committed, this is your hook for convincing and or, and or engaging people or department in joining your approach. Once you have identified the right commitment, you need to understand who are the right stakeholders to address this specific commitment. Should I involve the marketing department, the procurement or the engineering teams? Once I've identified who are the right stakeholders, I should understand how each of those actors are individually creating value for the organization or for a project. I can get this clear picture, for instance, by studying internal value creation processes, how my marketing department is currently creating customer value or how my engineering teams are currently creating industrial value, for instance. And once I've understood how each of those actors are separately creating value, I should try to connect those individual value creation processes. And for that, I should develop, let's say, tailored tools and practices, ensuring an effective collaboration. For instance, if we think about, the, let's say, an internal adaptation of the Ecolizer tool, it should facilitate the collaboration between product developers and LCA experts for identify, identifying the right design leaders. But I should make sure that we also ensure an effective use of those tools. Our at outcomes should be illustrated and intelligible for non environmental experts. We should provide design actions to engineers and not only climate, uh, climate impact data, for instance. So once you have, let's say, created this bridge between the right stakeholders for effectively translating an environmental commitment into a climate mitigation action, you can create your own shapes. And here I've taken the example of a triangle, but it could take whatever shape you want and suitable to your organization. 
Coming back to the packaging, here we saw that this methodology is derived from an analysis from projects in totally other sectors. But I'm quite convinced that this could be applied to the packaging industry. And again, that we should now try to use this type of methodological and strategic approach for turning what can still be considered as a constraint by many within some organization as a new way of enhancing the global value proposition in this transition phase. But to finalize this presentation, I think there are still several steps to and to climb before unlocking the potential of this approach. And I wish at Vito in the near future, we could be able to propose this type of methodological approach as a service for organizations who want to organize or rethink the way they are currently organizing their co-design activities. But my objective and my, um, yeah, my objective in sharing it with you and discussing it with you is to try to receive your comments and leverage it together and maybe also bring it into a, a research and innovation project to, together. So uh, I would like to thank you for your time and hopefully this will trigger a lot of questions. <laughs>